Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, live from Studio 630 in the burbs of Chicago. It is time now for another episode of Outside the Box. Outside the Box. With your hosts, Oz Osborne and Pee Wee Taylor. Welcome back. Welcome people. back. I know it's been a long time. It's been a minute. Um, Took actually, a week off. Actually, it was a week, two weeks, whatever. I think I still got wet clear on this freaking stool. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. Um, anyway, we're back. We had to take a week off. It was actually going to be another week or two weeks, but um, I don't know we about you. time out. But I kind of missed it. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. I, I like coming in here and doing this. So we're going to do this. Everything's a little bit crazy because, like I said, we were planning on doing this, and we just kind of said we're going to throw this together. So we don't, we're don't. we running send unscripted. It. We are going to send it. Um, so here we go. We, uh, yeah. So. What have you been up to? I've been up to a lot. Yeah. The garage is a mess, as you can tell. It's pretty bombed in here. <laughs> and the funny thing is, it's like we're doing this, then we're going to take all the video shit out of the garage, and then we're going to work on the next B again. Yep. But, um, we'll, Pedal stomped. Yes, as um, <laughs> ODB would say, the pedal is stomped, and uh, I'm ready for Sunday or ready for Monday, so I can go back to work and relax. To have a normal, just to have a normal day. Yeah, I took yesterday off. Um, worked on XB2 here. Um, actually, worked on that last couple weeks. Um, it's cleared, but. That's just a temporary clear. I'm going to wet sand that all off and start graphics. Not wet sand it off, but I'm going to scuff it, get all the dirt nibs out of it, and then uh, start some graphics. It looks, it. it looks pretty good, but it's, it's part of the deal. You have to so, you know, do that second clear, and it'll make it beautiful. Right. But, well, well, the main thing is I wasn't going to do it. I was just going to shoot the Intercoat 500 on it, but I mixed up too much pearl in it, so I shot it, and it was like fucking blue. It wasn't black it's a little, anymore. It it's a blue. little. It's got a blue tinge. It looks good. No, it's no, just, no. It was blue. Oh, is it like blue, blue? I went. Um, that's not gonna fly. So <laughs> that's not gonna work. So I had to rebase that and fix it. But then I decided that I would just do a light dusting. I got what I wanted. And look, there's a spider. Um, but uh, that's the kind of there. So that's going. But then we got to do. We got to get ready for a car show. We do have to get ready for a car show. We have a local show, Stance of Palooza by our boy Alex at Stance Down Low. Put together an indoor show at McHenry County Fairgrounds, right? Something like that. Yeah, it's all indoor because he's had this issue where he, he's had like th- four shows he put together. When he puts together a show, they're pretty legit. And it takes a lot of time and money. And he got tired of them getting rained out. He had like three shows get rained out. He's like, yeah, we're doing this one indoors. So weather is no factor. Yeah. And it, it's going to be interesting. It's not only that. It's got, he's it's got. pretty exclusive. There was only 75 cars. So. That. He's got you know. models. He's got other shit. And you know what? And a DJ. DJ. Like an actual and DJ. And then he was asking something about blog people. Oh, I don't know. So I said. I didn't catch that. We'll be there. Yeah. So well, you know what? Yeah. I might take, we might try to fucking do something. Just do an on the road show. We'll just fucking do it there. That maybe. would be cool. I, I don't know. Well, there'll be like two XBs and a bunch of freaking Stance Hondas. Yeah. I, well, the thing is we've got our finger on the pulse of all the XBs in our region. I mean, we pretty much know everybody or know of everybody. And I don't, I think me and you are the only ones going to be there. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, I don't know what we can do, but maybe we'll do something there. Just, just for fun. Maybe we'll just do to see if it freaking works. Or, anyway. Yeah. But in doing that, I got to get, you know, rail and box those are running. And yeah. that thing, I think I have it figured out. I watched freaking, the hell is that show, Rex to Riches or something on. on uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't have cable, so. It's not on cable. It's on oh, Netflix. is it not? I watched oh, that. It's on Netflix? And they were talking about some sh- car that they had problems with, and it was ABS. And I know that there's some of you guys out there that said ABS. And I hooked it all back up, and it still seemed to be an issue. But I think there's one sensor that has a broken wire. I think that's probably what's yeah. Going I think that'll do it. I, you know what? I know the show you're talking about because I watched the same one. It's like where they take a, a plain Jane car and they keep building yeah, they, a car, sell the car to try and hit it, a, like I, a million we dollars. We don't need to talk about yeah, that. Yeah, no, I'm not doing free publicity. The show pretty much sucks. Dude, this is fucking sticky. 
Do you need a different chair? There's... No, I'm good. Oh, all right, well. I just get stuck every so often. Anyway, uh, so uh, Raylan Box isn't going to make it, but I am going to take a Das Creature, which is lower than most of the cars there, but that's okay. So the main thing, and I'll tell you, this is kind of interesting because here I am, you know, I got Raylan Box, and, you know, it's one of the higher end modded whatever you want to fucking Real call box it. is pretty heavily the, the modified. list of modifications is like and you it's like two pages so it's like hey go ahead uh, let me know what you've got done um i got some, where do i start i got some coilovers i got um some 17 inch wheels um i did some painting yes and i'm like this sucks but anyway it got in Probably because I think Alex was thinking Raylan Box was well, he coming. Thought, he saw you and XB and was like, yeah, okay, he's in. Because it's to a point where, like, he likes to do where you apply to get into the show. Like, you send an email with the pictures and then just to keep it, you know, keep it clean and whatever. But it's to a point with us that we frequent so often, we almost, like, don't even need to do it, but we still do it. You yeah. Know, just because it makes it easier for him because he sends out – your rolling times and whatnot, but he so, was probably shocked when he was like, "Oh, you're not bringing the, you're not bringing real." Box. So Das Creature is going it's to a make substitute. It. It's is, a great and, substitute, and that's kind of what it's nice about it. I got it so that when I can work on that one, but I got shit all over. There's a door panel there over is, there. There's a pretty over there. So yesterday, after I cleared this and got this done, I went in the house, let the clear get out of the freaking garage, and then I pulled my interior part for Das Creature and started painting, and now I got stuff over there drying, and hopefully we can put it back together. And, there. and then when this is all done, we got to pull it in and do a wheel bearing on it. Yeah, that shouldn't be too bad. Uh, He's got the bearing in the freezer. We watched people do it without a press. I think it's going to be a pain, but I think I think it'll it'll work. I'm I'm assuming it's going to be a pain. That's why I allocated a day and a half, which we got to hurry up because it's like <laughs> we're halfway through the day well, already. It's almost three o'clock, oh. and we're going to have to fit oh. tacos in there somewhere. Yeah. So we're going to have to get to work. And and not only that, you know, the other thing that's been crazy about today is we're sitting there eating lunch, and all of a sudden the garbage starts blowing out. Oh and yeah, the, freaking the wind. Wind, is the wind nuts. up. And it's crazy because like I'm sitting here and I'm like. Raylan Box is sitting outside. It's got the hood on it, which is just sitting on it, and a freaking tarp because it's all bare metal. And if it rains like it did yesterday, I don't want it to get wet. And then and it started to flurry around. I thought it was going to start snowing, but it didn't. It, it's starting to go away. Uh, yeah, hopefully. There's tree branches everywhere. I just I just went <clears> on a beer run, and there was, like, branches everywhere. But it was, like, crazy. Like, dude, I, my tarp was, like, three doors down that way, and... Oh, it blew the garbage can across the yard, and it, hit, and it was full. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the other thing. And, like, and the funny, the funniest part about it is I was telling Kevin, because he's not used to, you know, he's here, but he's not here that much. Millington's in a valley. So yeah. normally if it's windy everywhere else, we don't get shit. No, so I, really I don't know what it's like above the hill. Yeah, I can but, imagine. But anyway, what'd you do? What have I been doing? Uh, not too much. I, kinda, I, went to a, I went to Iron Invasion. Oh, did you go to Iron Invasion? I Invasion? did go to Iron Invasion. It, the weather sucked. Yeah, it Like, does. every single show I've been to. I've had one show this year where it didn't rain. Yeah, Iron Invasion, it always rains. It's, all, it's always nasty. Yeah, every the past two years it rained. But that was all right. I didn't bring the XB because it's pre-64, but I found out they had a spot where you could have brought something if it wasn't pre-64. The cool cars. I wish around. I would have known because I would have brought it, but it was such a mud pit that, like, that I pulled into the spectator lot, and they go, I brought my truck and they're like, you have four wheel drive. I'm like, uh, no. And even if I did, the answer is still no, because you're not going to park me in a swamp. So I made him give me better parking. He's like, well, you shouldn't get stuck here. I'm like, keyword shouldn't. So I did that. I took to, I was going to take the wheel spacers off the XA for you. Apparently the front two spacers are different. So one's like an inch and one's like maybe three quarters. I didn't measure it, but it's not, the same and i don't know how long it's been on the car so i get the front ones off and i'm going to tell you what i drove it and it steers better like the well, steering it, 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 nice. it changes everything it, yeah it drives decent but it's like it drives a little like the steering feels different but it needs an alignment because after we put the lowering springs on and we took the coilovers out my toe in i'm driving i'm like you could hear the tires Mine's definitely needs an alignment. It pulls to the left a lot. Oh yeah, bad. mine's mine's pulling to the left too. I think. But I'm I'm like 
I gotta get this wheel bearing done. Then I'll freaking do it. I ain't doing it twice. You no, know, I would no, I would do the wheel bearing before I do anything. And then I tried to get the rears off. I'm running this electric impact on my driveway. It's like six o'clock. This thing's about to have a meltdown. I'm holding nothing. This thing didn't even budge. I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh, it's about dinner time. I got a shower, go to work. I put the wheel back on and gave up for the day. So like, I got some stupid, some super poke in the rear. It's got that staggered look. Kind of looks okay, actually. Well, you kind of had a staggered look from left to right. Yeah, because one wheel's like this and one <laughs> wheel's like that. It was great. But, I wonder, though. I don't know for a fact, but I was wondering if it was because of the, the long side of the axle. You know, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe there's a reason for that or if, like one of well, the spacers was messed up, so he just ordered. Well, think one. about it. I, and and again, this I don't know. So if anybody knows, let us know in the comments or whatever. Um, I know that on rail and box, when we put it back together after doing the the thing, I'm hitting the bag on one side and not on the other. Yeah. So like I, my second gen did that. And was the one on the passenger side the longer one? Yes. Yes, it was. I have a feeling that's supposed to be that way because, like I said, I'm that's what I'm hitting. Well, I'm going to give you all four, and you can figure it out. Hey, I think they're you guys all know, supposed to be the same, but I think from the factory, there's discrepancies. Like, it'll roll straight from the factory, but I think once you take it apart and change it out, it's you're going to – if you find out how – any discrepancy from the factory, you're going to really figure it out once you start taking it apart well, and changing it. I know guys. there's a, do- a lot of difference between the right and the left because of the long axle and the it's short the, axle. Yeah, it's the CV I, I've actually talked to some of the guys with, I think it was Airlift when I was having problems with uh-huh. my air ride, and they had said, you know, there's so much hot- – the XBs were thrown together so easily or thrown together so fast that they didn't know whether – well, let me re- rephrase that. I had ta- was talking about how it would cambered out. Yeah, yours was cambering and, positive, right? Instead yeah, of and negative. then it, he was saying that there's so some of them will be positive, some of them will be negative. So that just could be another one of those things that's along with. Was that. there any adjustment on the on the on the knuckle or no? No, no not at all. None. I, airlifts okay. don't even have a slotted thing like Rando's. Well, do. Dodes is is slotted. You can change it. Like what? What do you think? Two or three degrees, maybe? No, it's not two degrees, but you can you can move. It's it. enough that you can, if you're like a little tight on one side, you can tweak it and get it to work. Which, which is funny because when I now on the same car that I did the the airlift ones and I was positive, I put randos on there and it was fine. Nothing went positive. I think because it's because the randos have more adjustment. Well, that, and I I honestly think the way that randos are made, he's got a rig. They're one they're one by one made. They're not machine made in a factory in china yeah. so i actually think his rig to weld it is maybe better i don't know i don't know i mean what do i know jig. but jig. yeah he had a jig <laughs> they say i'm gonna say jig anyway so is that <laughs> now that we've totally skewed off of what kevin was doing what the hell are we drinking oh the globe ultra okay. what else would we be drinking we got a beer fridge now yeah we do we, it's over the, it's over there and but. you know what we can get to it yeah, and now we can not have to stop the show to go get a beer, but... Anyway, we were kind of rambling. We're going we're off rambling. the cuff on this. We, we didn't even freaking plan it. But we do have a plan. We just didn't script it out this at all. Um, one of the things we do want to bring up, we've got a couple things to bring up here. Uh, first off, drop them where. Somebody, who was it that was doing Dustin. it? Dustin. Dustin Boone Dustin with Minty with, with Minty, yes. Minty, uh, he is... Talking to that was it him or? Hey, okay, his wife originally posted about it, but I, I they're both in on it because they're both involved with that car pretty pretty heavily, <clears throat> and uh, they're gonna do a run of shirts. But the key thing is, is that the guy from Dropware is like, you gotta have like twenty five for me to do a run. So what does that mean? Okay, so we had a bunch of people that were on the post that she originally posted and said, yeah, I'm in. Here's what we need to do. Right now, you can push pause on the thing, get on your computer, go over to Drop Em Where. Um, what they, they, got a, they got a Facebook they, page, right? Yeah, they have a Facebook. Look up Drop Em Where on Facebook. Go over there and say, hey, I want an XB shirt. Because if you express the interest, I mean, he's easier than make money. So if there's, like, not enough interest, I don't blame him for not making it. But if you give him the interest, I'm pretty sure he'll do it. And I'm, I'm going to tell you guys right now. Um, I know Slamfest was last weekend. I heard it was wild. I've seen so much XB coverage from that. There's a lot. I know XB the gu- I know the guys from Box Lifestyle were there. They showed one XB that I haven't fucking seen yet. 
Was that that cream colored one that no, shaved? No, no. Oh, no. that might be from something else. No, that's an, that's um I got tagged by twenty people. Yeah, that's that. that's the guy that we met at Camp and Drag. Oh, is that him? Yeah. Anyway. Oh, he must have painted it. He did. Oh, I didn't know he painted he, he it. He primed it. Oh, well, whatever. Um, there was a, the color it was like blue uh, like blue on the bottom, silver on top, graphics. Well, he told me that the graphics were there originally. Like no, not, I'm, I'm flipped to the oh, next I'm, Okay, never mind. Back I'm to the other sorry, XP I'm, that was I'm at Slamfest. But there was a, quite a few. Um, but going back to the, what you were saying with that guy, he got a nod from Tuck and Clothing. That's pretty cool. Which was on their Instagram page. So I'm telling you guys, the mini truck thing is starting to pop off. And uh, the mini you know, thanks to Dustin... Who's always held it down at the mini truck shows? He's, He's at, at every show. Um, but um, you know, we're starting to see more and more of mini trucks popping up. And, yes. You know, Slam Fest. Like I said, that one just blew me away. I think I posted on Instagram when Box Lifestyle posted. Said more pics, please. Um, always. But there was a lot of XBs there, and we're coming out. And you know, I'm seeing a lot of work out there, guys. You guys that are out there. Excuse me. Burping on Burping on. You guys that are out there in the garage just working, and I cannot remember the guy that we were talking about at Camp Drag. I cannot remember his oh, name. God, I, it, oh, God. I'm, I'm sorry. Horrible, horrible names. But I spotted his face. I know. I, dude, yeah. he, he's hit me up a couple times. Dude, your shit's turning out I nice. just added him on Facebook, too. I'm he like, got that here. thing on Tuckin'. Um, what else we got? There's some other shit popping up. The XBs are coming out in Mini Truck World. Let's keep pushing it. Go to, go to um, drop him where, like I said. And just tell them we want that Say, shirt. Say, hey, hey, we want that shirt. And maybe I'm going to do it right after we're done here. Maybe a second gen. No, we don't need a second gen. Just first gen. Well, sure we do. No, fuck you guys. What? Well, fuck you too. <laughs> anyway, well, yes. Why not? Why, if you're going to do one, why not the other? But I don't the, know. If there's enough push, you'll make them. That's, that's we'll make opinion. the shirt. You know, at 25 to get it going, and then they'll be on the thing in any mini truck show. I you think there's to, enough boom. interest. I think they just, we need to, like, as a whole, it needs to get relayed to drop them where. Now it'll happen. That's my, that's what I think. That being said, you need to go over there and get yours over there because we can't take away from Mr. Oh, I got my shirt. Mode of our concepts. Look what we got in the mail. I usually don't do white, but I'm going to make an exception for this because we got shirts. We got the front. We got the back. Oh, that really came out. Yeah, dude, it freaking is badass. Let me put this over here for a second. There's not a place where I can't get a white shirt. Yeah, I don't. I, I have a white shirt. We're not used to having white, but I'm going to make an exception. So, for so anyway, we got to talk talk about Steve over there at uh, Motive Bar because we can't be like, hey, go to drop more, buy this shirt. But we got our guy Steve. No, I mean, it's a free market. I mean, I think Motive R is catered specifically. Yeah. I know he does other stuff. But drop more is cool, too. Well, and I'll tell you exactly. But, the nice thing about it is, dude, I, I didn't even send him pictures. He just freaking no, got No, he that. picked that picture off which, probably my Facebook. Which is funny because I'm sitting there looking at it like, dude, the freaking front end wasn't even done on that. The freaking upper bar for the radiator wasn't there. Yeah. Was Still turned out kick-ass. But hit him up. Not only does he do shirts like that, and he can put your shirt, your, your car. He can make you one. On that. He can do a rendering. He can... He can print it out on a sticker. He's crafty. He can do some shit. And uh, club shirts, he's going to work on some for us on Sunset, Illinois and whatnot. Which We're I tweaking got. out the final design. But, but uh, hit up Steve. He's a great guy. Uh, he also did our cozies, which another shout out we got to do is for Box Lifestyle. Box Lifestyle, I sent out, not these ones, but the new style ones. New style with the paint drips and it was white. <clears throat> we sent them down to the Bovagon show. Which unfortunately he said didn't sell. Yeah, that they they, they kind of bombed it. Yeah, then. maybe the cozies wasn't the way to go, but we did it. They bought them all. Yes, thank you. So thank we you gotta Box thank you guys lifestyle. a lot, um, and we're gonna put that money to get some video editing software, which we were just looking at. Um, so if you guys want one of these, I don't know. Well, I'm pointing it like this one, not like this one. It's a better one. It's the upgraded version of it. But um, hit them up. I don't know if it's on their website. Or hit up the guys on there and say, hey, I want one. Um, hit them directly. They'll probably. I'm not exactly sure what they're asking for for them. Um, but hit him up and see. Uh, and you can get one. And you can drink beer with us and be cooler be than we cool are. Because you got the good ones. Because you got the new one. We don't, I don't even have a new one. I didn't even get to see them. <laughs> I had Steve Fritz send them right there. So. Yeah, they got shipped. They got shipped straight, too. So we got so. him. Um, what else we got to bring up? 
You bring up Dark Side and, and Dode? Or two well, people. we're gonna bring up Dode a lot in the rest of this. So. Well, yeah. But we'll, it, what else? We'll we, talk about Dode. Is there later. anything that's been interesting on the Just Dark Side? The, no, on the forums. Brian's. Oh, you know what? Um, by the way, I don't know if anyone saw this. Rake is uh, he's working out lower control arm extensions. It pushes out the the ball joint three quarters of an inch. Like you unbolt it, and it's a plate that holds it. So if you're looking for that crazy so tilty wheel, it puts you out one degree past wherever you would get it from stock so if you want them they're a hundred bucks he's taking a pre-order him and another guy are designing it all out but if you want to do that i would recommend doing that because if you're in a stance that stuff's going to get harder and harder to find because i nobody else has made them before so if you're into that that's cool it's yeah definitely even the market. shims it's hard to get the rear uh camber shims now that are toe corrected yeah but i we don't get involved in stance, so... But that's know. out there. I'm just letting you guys know that that's floating around in forums. Um, what else we got? What else popped up? Did I tell you that Dustin won an award at Slamfest? I saw it. Dude, oh, that okay, trophy good. was sick. I'm assuming everybody saw it. Dude, those board, those board trophies are the bomb. You know what? what? I, I got hit up by um, one of the guys who is petitioning for... Shit. Of course, while the camera's on, I can't think of it. Yeah, that's how um, it goes. For the cl- show that's putting up, the club that is putting on Cruise in the Pines. Is that No Regrets that does that? No, it's not No Regrets. Oh, it, do- it doesn't matter, but uh, it does matter, actually. Uh, I can't think of it. You want me to look it up? You could get your phone here. Yeah, I got it right here. You, anyway, you carry on with I got hit up by up. them to see if I could paint a board for trophies there. That would be cool. Um, it's still pending or he's talking about it but i guess they have everybody do it and I, i've seen him like he hit me up he's like dude you want to do this i'm like uh, i thought you guys had somebody to do it because those trophies are the shit but he's like yeah we may have other people looking to do it so okay i'd be down so he's going to talk to him maybe i'll be doing that so i'll put that on my plate as well but um perfect poise perfect poise there it is yeah that's it thank you is figured it that out. i probably i'm pretty it. sure it is I'm like 90% sure it is. I don't sure think it's it perfect poise. No. <laughs> you want me to keep looking? Um, I can't find it on here because otherwise... It's, it's not... It's, I, I, uh, it's not perfect poise. It's, it's, something, it's something more West Coast. It's a mini truck club. It is a mini <clears throat> truck club. Are you sure it's not perfect? Okay. I'm, I'm going to... Uh, I'll carry on. Silence. Just carry on. Do you want to talk about what we actually intended to talk about? We're going to talk about that. But you we're want to talk have, about that gonna, now, or do you want to figure we're out? We're going to go into a cut. See what happens. This is why we need to write shit down. Yeah, we, we went off the, off the fly today. Because we would have written uh, that down, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, we can go on. So one of the other things I'm going to bring up was, and this is one of those things that hits me pretty good. There was a pretty good long thread for it, the built, not bought thing. Oh, God. And the built, not bought thing is like Ford versus Chevy, Honda versus Toyota, whatever you want to do. It's one of those things. But I'll tell you, the girl who initially posted it, and I didn't write her name down. I'm sorry, but you were brilliant. Um, Put it up there about passion, and I think that's a main thing. Uh, It really got me thinking about it. And it's not to say that... People that don't build their own shit don't have the passion, but it takes a little bit more to go. I agree. And, and my my thing was this. Okay. You like fish? Yeah. I, I like fish. Yeah. I'm not, I'm a, not fish, a big I, seafood eater. But I'm not yeah, a I'll fisherman, catch, are you? Fresh trout. Kind of, yeah. But, okay, so I like to eat fish. Okay. But does that make me a fisherman? Because I paid for the fish? Um. Well, if you don't fish, you don't fish. Right. So what's the difference between that and a car guy? I see where you're going with this. Okay. I see where you're going You can be a car enthusiast. See, I don't know if I agree with that. Okay. Like, the long short of it is, if you're, like, way into it, I think, I don't know. I see where you're going with this. Like, when you build it yourself, there's something more to it than when you have something built for you. All right. Hold on. Like, yeah, you're into it, but you're not. Like, let's put the pin back in the grenade real quick, okay? 
Okay, that's a good one. Let me explain this. As soon as we say that there's a difference between those two does not mean that one is better than the other. A guy that that goes fishing is not any better than the guy that eats fish. Because my dad goes fishing and he don't eat the goddamn fish. Why you go fishing? I don't don't eat the fish. I either give it to somebody or throw it back in. That's how I roll. But let's say that, okay? But there is a difference between the two, okay? Yes. A guy that's... That builds is not going to see you guys on the same level. I'm sorry. That's just the truth. Because you just, it, it, like like was said, there's a, lot, a passion thing there. Now, I live on a hard at, holy crap, dude. Holy shit. I'm sorry. We got distracted by the outside fact that it's like snowing, snowing. That's like crazy. And it's a little windy, yeah. We got some um, really funky weather. Today. But anyway. Sorry. Um, what I was saying was. What was I saying? You were saying about like <laughs> that it's a different level. It, I'm not saying it's a yeah. different level. I'm just saying it's a different thing. Okay. It is a different thing. A guy that builds it isn't going to look the same because, hey, you know what? I went out. I did it myself. I did it. Okay. Yeah, I understand that you can be a car enthusiast and that, but. It's just a difference of opinion, and we've got to see it that way. Not to say one's better than the other, even though we feel that way. But the other thing is, is I feel like a hypocrite sometimes because I'm like, oh, man, you got to build this shit. But, hey, I'll take your money. You want me to do that for you? I'll take that money. Well, that's the thing. Like, people, people need jobs. I don't think there's anything wrong with having someone do something, but I think – there should be a level where you can go, you know what? I could do that or I could learn how to do it. And then why? And do that's it. my, but thing. there's people who have a show car that won't do anything. Hey, you I've may seen not have these the trucks. Ability. They're beautiful, but you know, you may I don't not have think, the ability. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I think in the XB community, I think a lot of people do stuff that can be done at home or by themselves or with some assistance. I don't think there's a lot of stuff that gets farmed out. Like, like, like in, the, like in the mini truck world, like there are people who send off a truck and don't see it for a year and a half and then it comes back done. Yeah. And I, and I don't think that's the case with XB people. It's a very different, you know. One of the things I look at it is this, okay? I know you don't have the frame of mind. And I, I get told all the time, well, I don't have the skills. I didn't have the skills at one time. But yeah, I'll tell you of, what, a lot of stuff. I, I went, know. I had all the door handles shaved on my car and it was like a hundred dollars a door. And that was just to get it into primer. And that wasn't even back to paint. And I had to go, Oh shit, this is expensive. It does get expensive. So oh, I, I went and found a class and I learned how to do it. Okay. There's ways of doing it. You've got YouTube, you got all this other stuff. You, you can do that and, and learn, but don't sit back and go, I, I don't have the skills. Dude. Everybody at one point didn't have the skills. It takes a second, go and look. Hey, how do I do this? It doesn't matter if you're the guy that was online and I was going me- <coughs> to was gonna say something about he wanted to do, uh, he had the factory XB1 grill and he wanted to shave it flat. And he's like talking about great stuff, foam and Bondo. No, that's not oh, the way you do it. Whoa. <laughs> okay. There's better ways to do it. You that. go and grab a t-shirt and a freaking stapler and you cut the freaking t-shirt to fit the thing and you pull it tight over it. You put fiberglass resin on it, then you do your body work over the top of it, okay? That's right. it. It's, it's not hard. And the first one, you may screw up. But that's something you may not know. No. But like, but there's that, ways the internet makes it really easy now <coughs> to, like, you know, it find does. better ways to And that's, and that's it. I want, I want that. And I, I want people to, to go out and work. I want you guys to put messages down here that say, hey, how do I do this? Yeah, we did our freaking tech article on how to paint your wheel or your your brakes. I'm actually gonna do mine over the winter. That that was just mine look like shit. Something to test, but I want you guys to be inspired. I want you to get out there and motivation and do this. is is the thing. Because I'll tell you, you know? the the main thing is with this. You can pay somebody, but the guy that you're paying is just gonna do what you're thinking. Okay, if you learn how to do something. You're going to take it to the next level. Oh, I painted this on the last one, but maybe I can do it better. Maybe I can pinstripe it. You can learn to pinstripe or it's a lot of something else. Pinstripe. And then you put more and more into it. There's so much more that can be done when you think about it. And that's what I say. When I do it, my heart and soul is in what I'm doing. 
Yeah. But when I do something for somebody else, it's the same way. But it's hard to find those people that are going to do that. Because you can go down to... Right. I agree with that. You can go down to any body shop and go, hey, I want my door handle shaved. Are they going to go, you really want to shave them? Maybe we should just mold them in so you don't have the cut around it and you got the handle fixed. See, I like when you molded yours. But that's like, it. I like the way they're molded. That came up with my... That was my idea. I came up with it. There's other things that you can do. And I want you guys to get out there and learn and do that so... That you can do I that. mean, we're not and TV. Then, it's hard to make a tech, but like we like to do it when we can. Yeah, and we're going to do a little tech here today. We're, we're going to start this one we're off gonna here try. in a few minutes. Because we're going to cut it and go see what the hell happened outside. But um, we're going to do Anatomy of the Low, which is what this one's all about. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the things that you need to go into low. We're not going to get into... You know, the camber shit or any of that. We're just going to show you what it takes to get low and what you need to do. We're going to talk about everything from your suspension to raising wheel wells and arches and whatnot and into body drops. We're going to figure out how to do this here and show you guys. And we're going to bring it all to you so that now you guys all understand what goes into a body drop, what goes into. That's that is all your expertise, man. But that's I, I know thing. what you've explained to me and showed me when it comes to body dropping. So this is going to be a you episode. Well, I, and I want you guys to understand because what I did was no different than what's done on most mini trucks. Well, yes, there's a lot of misunderstandings of what you've done because I don't think people understand the whole premise of you having to raise the floor. People like see, oh, that he cut the towers, but there's more to it to get it to lay like his because people think, oh, it's, you know your body kit it's like no that's laying on the thing and people well, can get low than what lower than what a kit will give you but he's done more than most people understand and the he's main thing i want to do is this. i am tired of hearing i want to put the rail on it you're not no, going to put the rail no, on the ground dude. right yes you're this not. is all you um i will shine light on second gen knowledge when i can with this episode but i think this is gonna be i'm gonna say it right now you're not gonna put the rail on the ground with those rocker panels or the the side those skirts. plastic covers are not the rockers the first thing that That's hits the thing. is the side skirt after that there's some other shit i gotta climb under there and remember but it's not um, there's a lot that's got to be moved around yeah so it's not take, just it like dude yeah. it took a lot to fucking and I got into it with people way back in the day. Oh, I can I can put my my rocker on the ground. No, you can't. No, you're putting the plastic rocker cover on the ground. Thomas, I can't remember his name. I, I got into arguments. I, was... I laid my pinch on the ground. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, because the because the the plastic rocker cover will hit before the pinch one yeah. does. So we're gonna go into all that. We're gonna shut this off. We are what thirty minutes in. Shit, that means we gotta explain everything. We're about, about, we're about half time. We're about half time here. But the, you know what though, with the whole built not bought thing, so far in the XB, I with a lot of help from this guy, we've done everything here, or I've done it at my house. But there's two things I had done that I was not gonna do. I will not tint my own windows. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> I've done it twice, and every time I did it was not good. I was just like, you know what? If you want to do it, probably the XB is one of the easiest cars to do it on. But I tried doing it on a Ford Taurus, and I don't know if any of you ever fucked with a Taurus before, but that the windows window? are like fishbowls, and it, I, I don't have the patience for it. It's one of these things where it's like there's not a lot of heart and soul that goes into tinting a window. You just tint the windows. That and doing the seats... Like, I know a lot of people go for Clasios, and that's fine, but, like, I, I refuse to have diamond stitch anything. I'm just bored with it. So I am having the seats shipped out. I'm going to do the headliner myself because that's something I feel like I can handle. But with the seats, I don't think I could upholster those seats to the level of it, what somebody who is set up to do it. And there's a lot of gear you have to have to do that type of work. So there's some things that I think are okay to farm out. Well, you're, you're going to run you into know. that with everything. I've yeah. done everything. I've done my own seats. I had my mom sew it. you done your own it. seats? I, I put the seats together after my mom sewed them. I've done that. I've done, tinted my own windows. I've designed my own logos for the back window. I've done everything. Yeah. you. And, and yeah. It's, it's not to say you have to do that. And that's not to say I'm better than anybody. But I'm going to tell you this. You think it's kick-ass to look at your car when you walk away 
Imagine it is if you created it and it was what was in your head and your hands did it. Imagine That's how I that feel thing. when I see like the back half of the car with this with the shaved panel because it always like I, I don't know. What I, what I, my favorite is when I come home and I, st- I park my truck and I look over and see it just squatting on the driveway. I'm like, yes. My main thing is this, and I say this to everybody. First off, you're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes. I made a lot Don't of mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes because you'll <laughs> learn. The second thing is, if it's hard, everybody would do it. That's why there's only one body drop up to speed. I think you meant if it was easy, everyone would do it. Yeah, that's what I, what did I say. No, you said if it was hard, everyone would do it. Oh, yeah, what he said, not what I said. <laughs> yeah, we, we got it, but... <laughs> but yeah, but that's it. And that's it, dude. And, and, you know, I see, you know, how many... Everybody was into the old JDM thing. Dude, how many freaking JDM cars we got running around? There's a fucking JDM bumper Define. over there, and I am out, I, not into JDM. Okay, but the JDM bumper does have a different... Oh, it's a different look, but I'm well, just you saying... Well, don't, you don't, you're not trying to make your car look like it was from Japan. There's, no. like, the whole point of the jdm thing is it's supposed to be like you're making it look like it's from japan right but that's my point. jdm's dead i don't want my car to look like anybody else's i think i've i don't i think i've done that i think you've but gone past that my thing is that i don't want it to look like everybody else's and it, and I, that just doesn't get to me I, I i don't get it i guess that's why sometimes i look at some of the xb stuff you come from like, hot rod mini truck culture a lot of people come from import culture it's two very different things but oh you were you were involved in imports too yeah my my, my eclipse is co- totally different is it a different era different generation maybe but anyway we we'll get, get we'll get we'll, get we'll get back we have Excuse rambled me, on that. for 35 minutes we have we've, five minutes too we've long. taken far too long of your time we were on half time but but we, wait a minute Go do your freaking thing for... Oh, wait a minute. I got one other thing. Tell Drop and where you want an XB shirt. Yes. And, and a second what? gen shirt too. I want to bring this to the table. This is All Time Real World quick. Magazine. Yes. If you guys didn't notice, when you grab the calendar, when you grab the calendar and look... Oh, wait, we can't show the inside. I'll find the, I'll find the advertisement. You can handle the advertisement. He, so. showed, he showed the advertisement page. Oh, well, then I can show the advertisement. Look, we got all-time little right there. Okay? Right there. This magazine is supporting XB's. Get out there. Buy it. My XB's been in here. Uh, Minty, I think, has been in here. Minty's been in there a bunch. Uh, I was in it, but I think I was. it's because my car was next to yours. And I'll also say this. <laughs> The owner that does this his name is Rich Waterman, right? Yes. Rich Waterman. He's got an XB too. Has a black XB first gen. It was in our old and it, intro. And it was in our, our intro before. So go out there, grab this. This is kick ass because, you know, you can work hard, get your car in here. Uh, he all, every month he goes through and asks for pictures for the, the one. Co- yes. For the graffiti wall, like the old <clears throat> mini right. truck graffiti wall. You can have yeah. it thrown in there or uh, whatever. He likes XBs. So, so if it's something cool, he'll he'll throw it in there. He's and, good like that. And that's that. what I'm saying, guys. Yeah, it's a little expensive. I think it's fifty dollars for six issues, but that there's no ads in there. No, I don't Very even think it's that much. Uh, they're like, eh, maybe they're like. I think I, think I paid 10? fifty bucks. Yeah, I got the one year. I but think it, the one year's. It doesn't matter. It's a little. Atlmag.com. Yeah, but the thing is, here's the key though. You pay more, but when you get a magazine, it is. 98% content. It there is. is no advertisements. There. There's okay. There's like a couple, but they don't pollute it with advertisements. It's not like when you get a hot rod magazine and half of it's advertisements. You get, you get a poster. You get a poster. They look good on the wall. Um, you also, most of the time he's got stickers in there as well. Yeah. So it's good. But another Sweet. XB guy, help him out. He's out there watching rich. Thank you very much for everything you've done for the community, for XBs. I know we're going to do more. Let's get more XB, mini truck XBs out there and, and XB uh, all together. So anyway, I'm going to hit the pause button. We're going to go outside and see if we got ours outside. And then we're going to try to do some <laughs> shit. We'll be back. Hold on, i got to play Where's the Mouse. There it is. Outside the Box Video Podcast would like to thank our sponsor, Motive R Concepts. Steve Ball over at Motive R, the mastermind behind some of our t-shirt designs, can also do the same for you. Put your shirt or your car on a shirt, on a rendering, banners, or whatever else you can think of. If you don't have the artwork, hit him up as well, and he can design it up for you. He's done work for us and our club as well. So definitely hit up Steve 
over at Motive R. Look them up on Facebook, Motive R Concepts with a Z, not an S at the end. I made that mistake and couldn't find them, so definitely put the Z in there. Thanks a lot, Steve. All right, we are back. We're back. Where the hell did I put my beer? Over there. Mine's right there. We, we had to tweak the camera so we can tune in for this a little bit better. Yeah, we aimed it down. We cut off the chick's head. But that's that's okay. all right. Anyway. That's all right. We're back to Anatomy of the Low. Yes. So. For Exhibit A. We're going to start a stock off strut. with what we got stock. This is your stock first gen strut, okay? This is what dictates how low you are, okay? I've heard people talk about control arms. Control arm don't do shit. Control arm bolts to this, okay? And that doesn't change anything. All you're doing by lowering the control arm is moving the control arm down here or pushing it down lower, which is going to cause it to hit things. This is what dictates how tall you are. Your spring, top hats, and then obviously- From the hull to the top, this a top hat dictates how low you are, okay. not your control arm. So, this is our factory one. You know, this is what we call the top hat. You can get lower top hats from Rando that fucking kick ass with spherical bearings on it. This one don't freaking spin for shit. That one's old and gross. Okay, so this is exactly what comes out. We pulled it right out of my XB, okay? So we pulled this out. The hell is, there's a freaking screw stuck in here. Probably came from Japan like that. Yeah, that ain't mine. So anyway, That's odd. now, if you want to start lowering the vehicle, the basic most basic way and you guys laugh because you're like oh, you're a fucking hat cut the spring that's all we had in 90 you wouldn't even by lowering springs you had cut this you wouldn't shit. be here if it wasn't for us guys that were cutting this shit we'd cut it down i've even heard and i didn't do this or you heat them up and shrink them you can i never that did that never no. did that but i did cut them i'd cut a coil out get it to drop I've heard of people taking the fucking springs off and driving down the road, and the cars are. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, do that. don't do that. But I highly anyway, advise that. Whether you think it's a hack now, you can do that. My Eclipse, I fucking hacked it, took out like two coils, rode better than fucking coilovers at the time. I don't doubt that because those old <laughs> coilovers were like junk. They were, but that's how you start out. Okay. Then you can go to, grab that spring, the red spring. This is probably for a rear, but you get lowering spring. Here, a, leave that, that here. A, oh, you want that here? Okay. You're going to take, do these. All right. The most basic way other than that is to change your spring, which is this here. To do that, you take this nut off the top hat, which now I got grease all over my hands. You need to get a spring compressor because it's going to pop if you don't. Yes, you definitely need And you have to get a spring compressor to put it back in anyway, so just go get one. I'm going to tell you. from AutoZone. I'm going to tell you, some of the scariest times I've had was taking this bad boy off. You take this spring off, which I just put grease on my finger again. Um, you take the spring off. This is under load. It will pop off. I've been in shops. We had 20 guys in a shop, and the fucking thing shot across. We're like, you're grabbing it with a wrench going, stand back. Stand back. Stand back. Yeah, be careful with this. You can get a spring compressor. Basically, it bolts onto here. You can get it all the zone. You go rent it. You put it on here. It compresses the spring a little bit. You pop it off. No big deal. Advanced and O'Reilly does it too. So. I did do this one on mine, not thinking, and it didn't do bad. Like when I changed the top out. No, oh. I was like, dude, that's going to pop. Oh, I should be okay. Boing. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Wasn't so too bad. Okay, but. so grab that other one that I got over there without the spring. You want the, you, oh, you want this one? So then you take that off, right? Now you've got basically your strut, okay? This one's obviously shot. That one's toast. So anyway, then you put your spring on, put your top back hat on, and tighten it down. Make sure you've got a freaking impact to do it because normally this shaft will spin on you. Not fun if you got to grab it with a pair of pliers and that. So there's that, okay? That's the second way of doing it, and that that usually get you. I think with the XBs, the most you can get from springs is a two inch drop. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's like a two. The DF two tens go like two. It's like two inches. That's it. Doesn't it takes that really weird giant gap out? That's all it does. It really doesn't. 
make you lower. It doesn't really even change the way it rides. I mean, a little bit, but not bad. The not, it, it will ride a little stiffer, but you're still going to have a nice ride. Because your spring rate changes once you make it a... When you did, like all the spring rates change, but yes. it's not bad. Yes, and, and <clears throat> you know all the geometry changes, and it's going to depend between your shocks too. If you're going to, or not, excuse me, shocks, your springs. You can buy a set of eBay springs, and they work great, or you can buy a set of eBay, eBay springs that ride like shit. It's all going to matter. Now, I'm sure if you're spending the extra coin and buying an iBox spring or you know any of the name brands, the iBox are good. Their your quality is going to be a little I-box. better, I, but you know, for me, it's a lowered car. It's going to ride a little bad. If you if you want a Cadillac, don't lower your car. So there's that. Our next thing is our coil. You got the coilovers. What you got right here? A lot shorter, and there's coil more over. adjustment. That one's a little. This one's up a too. little wonkus, but this is a coilover. You can adjust this by spinning these collars, and you can make it lower. You can make it higher depending on what you want. I'm gonna elaborate on this when you're done. Go ahead. All right, so what you're looking at here, this is a Raceland. What you spend on coilovers, you can buy a set of Racelands for, the last time I checked, it's like 250 for a set of first gens. Uh, you can get up over a thousand if you want really high end. I had BCs, I spent a grand, but those had a lot more adjustment on them and they I think they ride a lot better than Racelands do, but you, you will get the same effect, the same look. Yes, and I, I definitely From agree. Your ride quality is going to get better with the better quality product. They will, I'm promise. pretty impressed with how these coilovers work. Like I said, or how they ride. Like I said, when I had my Eclipse and I, I bought a set of coilovers, I never put them on. I sold them to a buddy. He put them on his Eclipse, and I was like, God, I'm so glad I didn't put them on. Obviously, it's gotten a lot better. In obviously, the past it's a little decade. better. These ones will have the dual spring. So you see how in here you got this spring, which is a tighter spring. It's a helper spring. And then you've got this. So it's going to have two different spring rates in here that will help your ride quality a little better. But you can get this down pretty good. This is what I've got on Das Creature right now. And they're all the way to the basement. All the way down to the basement. And on the backs, which if you reach behind you, Kevin, those are over there. <clears throat> this is the new style. The older style was different, but it's the in same In your back, this is what you've got, okay? And you can adjust and lower it by moving these There's collars There's like well. the sleeves and they What spin. I found was when we put those race lens in mine is the back would sit up about, was it about an inch and a half, two inch? Yeah, maybe an inch and a half. I'm going to say inch and a half. So what I did was I pulled this out and rides fine. But I don't have the adjustability. I don't need the adjustability. I want the lower. You only need that if you want to raise it. Right. So, so you can pull that out, run this in there. You just got to be... Uh, a little more careful when you don't have this because when you lift the car up, there's a chance that this may pop out or not seat properly because it's it, it, it probably it can fall out if your shocks are like loose, like if you've got old loose shocks. I've heard of them falling out if you lift the car all the way off the ground. But if your shocks are good, it but it still has the possibility to not seat the way it's supposed to. So just keep an eye on that. And that was the main problem we had with when we were running like on my Eclipse when I cut the coils. I'd freaking lift the car up in the spring and go bling and fall out. Bling. <laughs> Bounce out. But anyway. So there's that. And that's your basic setup, okay? You know, that's how you're going to get low. Lower. Lower, whatever. Lower. Next thing you can do is your shocks in the back. I know everybody talks about shocks going from, was it Sienna shocks? If you've got, I've heard Echo shocks, but from my understanding, it's the Sienna shocks. The but Sienna there's certain shocks. model gears you want from certain brands. Now, how this lowers a vehicle is this has a different stroke rate. Okay, if you've got a vehicle that like the XB, obviously this is a huge freaking shock. The Sienna ones are going to be a little bit They're shorter, shorter. Yeah. and that's going to allow you to get. Still a dampening on your ride. Dampening is key to your ride quality too. But it will also won't get as tall, which you don't need because if we take this factory shock and put it in there with lowering, we just took out a bunch of the stroke on that. Okay, right. stroke we don't need. So by changing this to a Sienna shock, you're not changing much other than you're lowering the thing down. So it's it's a lot shorter stroke, and you don't need all of that. So. There's that, like you said, uh, the Sienna ones, or what was the other one we said? 
I think Echoes. Echoes, I think. But the Sienna's are the best ones. Now, the next thing, if you were to do this, and I'm going to bring this up because I know because I've talked about this with Rando. And I will have to show you what this is, but um, I'll show you in the next set. But I'm going to set this up here uh, before we shut it off and go to our next cut. Um, the next thing was if you are running what is called the Rando hub mount, okay, if you look at the rear axle on it, there's a piece that the hub of the wheel mounts bolts to. Okay, Rando actually has a, a lowering one of those. This is a high end, um, know what the fuck you're doing mod, okay? Yeah, you have to weld it in. If you don't, if, if you you're don't, not confident, you're not a welder, you don't know how to weld, send it to somebody to do it. You don't have a 220 no welder. Shame. You Take have it to, to the shop it. down the street, have it done, okay? Yes. What it does is it takes your hub, which it is like raises here, it. and raises it up, okay? If you're going to do that, you need to run the factory shocks. You cannot run the Sienna shocks because as soon as you do, it's not long enough and it won't work. So know that. That's good gonna... to know for people who don't know that. And, and it's it's sad. I, it was like, I was just about to order them, and Rando had have those coming to me. He's like, do, 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 don't buy that because you're not going to be able to use it. I'm like, okay, cool. I think uh, one of the other guys I knew, he did it, and then um, he he ordered the Sienna shocks. He's like, what the fuck? These don't work. And I'm like, hey, yeah, I just heard that. You can't do yeah, that. Yeah, I just got the memo. So now let's move into the – well, I ain't even going to go. We're going to go into Air Ride, okay? Grab that this old... is big boy shit now. <laughs> yeah, ready. big boy. Bags are for groceries, right? Bags are for people who want to be low. Okay. So this is so, decrepit, okay? But this is basically an air strut, okay? Same thing as a that is an airlift strut specifically. <laughs> basically, they're the same, okay? That shock's kind of sunken in, but you get yeah. the idea. Just well, so people aren't like, oh, I is it like two feet is, shorter? This is a first gen airlift. This has been sitting in my side yard as a yard ornament. But you know, you've got special bags that have a hard spot or an open spot. They're usually this, Aeros, uh, Air House in, Aerosport 2s for... In here like um, that. Dode. Um, with these, you're usually running a non-bellow bag, which this is a double bellow. That's uh, the, that doesn't go with it. That's just like for, for reference. Reference. So then you'd have, instead of having your spring, you have that there. Now, your air, the adjustability on that is by air. You fill the air and it, it takes the place of that spring and allows it to go up and down, and you can collapse it all the way down. This is probably one of the shittiest fucking bags I've got. That was a bad example. That's what a bag but, shouldn't look like, but it's what we have handy. Oh, yeah. I've got an air coming out of it. But that's your bag, and then it does it. And you can also adjust the ride quality by doing that. You know, if you're running 100 PSI, the fucking thing's going to ride like a bounce house Don't. down the road. You drive at 100 PSI, you're going to rattle the car apart. But you can then adjust it down to where you like it, your your height. It not only adjusts your height, but it also adjusts your ride quality. So if you're running it like a 60, what do I run? Um, it depends on your bag, too. If you're running an airlift, it you, depends on you're going to have a single sleeve bag. You're going to run a higher air pressure than you are if you've got a double bell bag and a rando or even an or even like an air house too because like i was a little off topic but real quick i was on the bag board somebody goes what does everyone run for psi i'm like dude that's asking like a really really sporadic question you got to feel you got to drive it you got to feel because your wheel tire combo changes that your length of your airline changes that the type of bag the airline's so, not going to change that. It's all going to be. Well, it, it's going to be your whatever. Bag. You got to yeah. If you're run, depending on your bag, if you've got a small bag like that one, or a bigger bag like the Randoed ones, which are really big, you're going to run more pressure. I think if I have that size in the back. I will normally run um, forty psi in the back. Now, that's a lot. I'm going to say this after we just got done saying don't run 100 psi. I have to run 100 psi in mine. If I don't, I can't. Yeah, you're it. you have a whole different setup so, going on. In the front, I have to have a bunch, but I I can ride at like 60 psi. I can. Yeah, 60 minimally. psi is but, about. But yeah. 60 is about right. A bigger bag, for whatever reason, it takes less air pressure to do it. I know there's some scientific shit to it, but it's the same with tires. If you're looking at a low low profile tire, you got to have more PSI in a low pro tire than you do in a bigger balloon tire. So, 
I run 50 PSIs on my tires. But anyway, but. that's your air, the, going into that, you know. Um, and again, the same thing works in the back with that. You're running your bags in the back. You can go to the Sienna shock in the back, which is going to give you a little extra low, okay. Other things that you can do in the back uh, depends on your rear bag mounts, okay. I know Randoad has some super low ones, Um that he makes for factory, which you don't need to cut to do. I actually, that's what I have now. I actually have my own that I can make for people if you need them, which I go even lower because I don't even really have a mount on the bottom and the top, you have to take out the spring, spring mount. Merge. Yeah. You take that out. It's flat. Mine actually goes around the freaking rail and up so that the bag is sitting at the rail and at the bottom there, you got nothing in there to get in the way. So that's how it's going to dictate how low you go is because you got to look at that, okay? Between the shock plate or where the shock mount, or what am I saying shock? The bag mounts in the front top and the bag mounts in the bottom. Anything that's in there is going to get in your way of collapsing, okay? Right. The Dode ones are nice because they, they everyone's seen mine. <clears throat> I have the stock Dode ones. I'm going to change it out because I want to get the back lower until I cut mine. But like when you when you go to set up, when you first bag your car, it's pretty foolproof and it's pretty, it's very reliable. It doesn't, for people who want to, you know, get into that. But if you want to get lower than that, you got to start changing stuff up. And there's so. ways of doing that, you know. The basic idea is we're going to go back to this ugly ass bag. You know, you've got your mouth. Yeah, I think here. you have a better looking one up there, but that's. Really? I don't know. Yeah, it's under the, the oh, thing. I do. Let's get that yeah, one. I get that one. I grabbed the ugliest, worst defective bag you have. This one's got cobwebs on it. Oh, this one's equally as old. Yeah, that's a dinosaur, too. Okay, but this one kind of also give you. Here's a difference. You will be running a lower pressure in, in this one than you will be in this one to get lift. Yes. But anyway. All right, here's our bag. So the idea is that you don't want much in here above or below in an XB to get this to completely collapse. Okay, that's as low as the car can go. So if you can get a bag that collapses better, which are the slam bags, I think it is. Yeah, slams drop pretty good. Slam bags are the ones that collapse the best for that. Which I don't run. I'm going the to air house get... twos from UA are pretty close. Uh, like the collapse height and full lift height. I think height the UA is... ones are, are are good too. Yeah. Yeah, I recommend the UA ones and slam specialties are always pretty so proof. That these are obviously this is a very old fire. Is that stone. a Firestone? It yeah. Is. Um, but the less you can have above here and down here, the lower you're going to get. Okay, you can actually take and make it. I this one doesn't have it. The other one had one screw here. I've made it where you've gotten a bolt and a big washer, put it on the bottom and in there and make it so that it bolts there. There you got nothing underneath it. Okay. Yeah. You do have to be careful because if I was to bolt this bag in the back, this bag will rub all the way yes, around. Yes, please bring that up too so people understand that too. On where the coil fits, okay? So you're gonna need to run that smaller bag. You can put that in there and make it so that that's a main issue with Air ride. Whoa. I'm going to pop a bag. Dude. The only way you <clears throat> pop bags is if something malfunction, malfunctions with the bag itself from either age or deterioration, which takes a very long time because the new bags are better. But a lot of times when I've seen bags fail, and I'm sure you're going to agree with this, it's because they're rubbing up against something. They're now, chafing up against metal. In doing that, I'm going to go back to the Randode ones. Randode's running a bag like this on your struts up front. Okay. I know Crystal... She had this problem. She popped a bag and I go, you did not take the bolts out or grind the bolts loose on the inside of the strut tower. Yes. For the, um... on the randodes, it's so wide. There is these welded nuts on the inside of the tower that there are brackets that mount on the outside of the tower. This will hit those. If you are running a randode bag, go out. Look at your bag now and see. You're probably going to have some war wounds on that from rubbing them against that. And that will cause the bag to fail. That will cause the bag to fail. So if you have to, go out, grind those down, and find a new way to make those, those bolt mounts. It's not hard to do. It takes no, like 10 not. minutes. 
Do it, and then you'll save your bag. Then there's nothing that's going to hit this bag, okay? This bag should be fine until it dry rots and goes away. And it takes years for right. that to happen. Now, your back bags, like I said, you're running a big one. You've got to look and see if you can make it work because you, when you put this in the axle, you have that piece that goes around that the, the original spring fits in. It kind of goes around it and follows, you know, sup, or protects it, okay? You got to make sure that it doesn't hit. You, you can get that to go all the way down. So run a smaller bag. Now, we'll go back to this ugly one for a minute. Talking about dry rotting and that. That's what happened with this bag, okay? I don't know if you guys can see it. There's some- I'll zoom it in for you here. Some wire in there hanging out. That's a dry rotted bag. It might be a little dark, but- Yeah, you, it's, it, you can. It, basically though, <laughs> it's all dilapidated. The, in between the two bellows, is there's a, uh, a bunch of wire in here and it'll dry rot out. Then when I open this or you know air this thing up, it's basically got no bellows anymore and it's completely flat. Um, it's like which a giant is, tube. Which was cool <laughs> looking, but you know I, I looked under my car and I'm like, what the hell did I run over? Nah, the bag just broke, so I pulled this out. Um, so don't don't get into that. Now we're gonna go into we're gonna go back to our other thing here with our top hat, okay? With our strut, this works for both, and I don't have them with me because I didn't get to tear my car apart to do it. Your top hat, okay? This is your factory one. You can see how much room we have in here, okay? We want to eliminate that. We want to make that as small as possible to get the vehicle lower, okay? Rando has these kick-ass spherical ball joint, or with it spherical joint? They're spherical uh, orbiting orbital bearing, orbital bearings. There that's you what go. Call them. That's yeah. it. Sometimes he did that without a piece of paper <clears throat> to say that too. I know. Anyway, his work really great. They're a lot lower. You, they're the lowest thing on the market. If you've got an airlift, the ones I've seen on airlift, there's like a good inch and a half to two inches on it. Okay, you got the airlifts. You want to go lower? You can still put those top hats on it. You can put are those top hats on mm, everything. Are you sure? Are you sure they'll take airlifts? Yes, they will because it's okay. all the same bolt. <clears throat> All right, I didn't know. I well, no, I thought there were certain some things that didn't fit with. No, I'm pretty sure they all top fit. hats. So you can put those on anything. Coil You'll have to overs, verify that yourself. But anything, that's, yeah. Okay. Jesus Christ, um, um, those guys that have the freaking top hats too with the freaking adjustments on it, you can get those aftermarket, I believe. You can put those on, um, but that's gonna you no. Know, that's your second. I don't thing. know if that works with those. You have to play. You have to figure out what's gonna work with what. You got to do some. But research you know, we're, we're focusing on low right now. So if you're going to go with a look to get the lowest, you need to get first off a lower top hat. Um, I wish I really had an airlift all together and a rando to put next to them. I have a picture that I'll post. That would be, yeah, we'll have to post Dude, that later. You, you won't believe it. And it's, I've, it's pretty staggering. The, the difference. I've gotten into arguments with people. Airlift will get you lower. Dude, it will not. Airlifts are junk. <laughs> I'm not saying they're junk. I don't I like think them. they're junk. That's but fine. an airlift, if you put an airlift up, it's to a rando and rando's down here. And you know, the nice thing about airlift is you will get some lift, but it'll push you past stock. Why do I need that? They're like monster trucks. If yeah. you ever take an airlift. Rando will get you much lower and get you back up to stock. That's all you need. You don't need to go any yeah, higher. I've, I measured it. If you full lock like with like a hundred PSI of the front, it's almost stock. It's not quite there, but it's high enough that you can get over any speed bump. So, right. so that's basically it. Okay. And we're going to do another episode where we get into air ride and we're going to show you what everything does, but that's basically it. Okay. Now, like I said, in the beginning, that is how you lower the vehicle control arms. No, um, you're, you're basically need to, uh, Shorten the space between where the hub is on the freaking car to where the top of the tower is, and that's it, okay? Once we've done all this, that's as low as we can go, okay? There's other ways of doing it with your um, bag over, coil overs. There's all kinds of that shit. I'm not exactly sure how those work, but the whole thing is all the same. You know, I think a bag over, coil over has a coil and a bag. And well, what, from my understanding is that with those those coil over bag combos, 
you can use the same coilovers that have all the adjustment. You get your camera adjustment, you get your shock rate adjustment, you get your whatever, all your adjustments out of it. But instead of there being a spring, it's a bag. That's the only difference. That's about all I know. Okay. If you want to know more than that, you, you can talk You're to Rake to or somebody or know. look it up because that's our past our but knowledge. But what does bring me into another thing, okay? And this is what we were talking about. Oh, okay. This will tell you <laughs> as I scrape <laughs> the bolts off. What we were talking about earlier with the adjustment on the airlifts or on the struts. None. There okay, is here's none. your airlift. He do, this one does have it. This is a first gen one so this one's fairly old i don't know if the second or third gens have that but you can see that this top slot is elongated okay what that is going to do is it's going to allow you to take that knuckle and you can turn it just a little bit to adjust it so if you've got to get away from the bag a little bit you can you know you can get a little bit another thing that you can do is and i'll tell you i didn't i'll tell you how i found out about it was i was taking my other xb apart and i'm like who the fuck worked on this? The fucking bolts aren't even the same size. And I went, oh, oh wait a that's why the bolts aren't the same size. <laughs> if you don't have the adjustment, you can go get a smaller bolt. To grade put eight. Grade eight only. Okay. What that is, grade eight, is the strength of the freaking bolt. Okay. Make sure it's grade eight. Don't put anything that you've got floating around the house. Go to the store, buy yourself a grade A bolt, and don't get too thin on it. You want to make it a couple sizes smaller, but that's it. That'll also give you a little bit to adjust in here, too. Or, you, or... And you can play with that, depending on where you put, you know. Don't, I wouldn't recommend changing both to a different I would size. not change both. Leave but... one, but you can change it from top to bottom and play with it to get it to where you want. We're not talking an extreme amount, but I think when I did um, Ross's, I was cracking up because um, I was laughing at how these guys are all like, oh, the fitment is on point. And I went and I grabbed his strut, fucking adjusted it a little bit, aired it down, took the fender. I think I put a washer behind the fender in the front, pushed it out. Perfect fitment. I was like, fuck, this ain't hard. Of course, the wheel specs were right. but We're like this. <laughs> it's all about it's all about having wheels that fit. I'm not making fun of you guys. I'm just you know yeah, whatever. You are. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so that's anyway. it. Okay, guys, that's how that all works. Now uh, we're gonna talk about some other stuff like raising towers and whatnot. I gotta figure out how I can show you about a body drop because I my car's out there in the cold and I don't want to go out there. But we're gonna figure it out and we'll get back to you in a second. Just. Watch this whatever cut screen I got here, and then we'll get back to you with that right after. All right, guys. We're back. Back. Fuck with the camera again to get you so you can see. Kevin wanted to bring up something about second gens on the rear end. Yes. So with when you bag a second gen, whether you're on airlift or dodes, which the dodes go lower than the airlift, what happens is the stock strut keeps it from letting it go as low as it can. You need a beer? Yeah. Continue. All right. So anyhow, what happens is, is it won't let it, the car air down all the way. So the way you can fix that is you either change out the shocks. I don't remember what type. I think it's, I think it's Sienna's still. It's a different model. You're the, I don't know. Please look that up. Please don't rely on me for that piece of information. But I didn't go that route. I had a set of BC coilovers. I kept the rear shocks, which are adjustable and designed to collapse, and they're shorter because they're designed to be adjustable. So I kept those. Those seem to work out really well because you can adjust the, you know, the dampening on them. You can adjust the height on them. But if you don't already have them and you piece them together, they are expensive. You can buy it separately from BC. But what happens is BC goes, okay, we'll sell you the shock, but then you have to buy every piece of hardware for it individually. So by the time you're done, it's like 300 bucks for shocks for two. But anyway, what are you saying is you got to change? You got to change your shocks. That you was need, a long winded story, but you have to change. You need your shocks. a shock with a shorter stroke. So yes, there's that. Now we're going to get back to some of this stuff. We're going to go to the rear now uh, and talk about the rear hub mount. This is what we've got here. This is a rando rear hub mount. This is how they come from him. Um, let me show you the next picture here. 
This is going to be a lot of Oz talking, so I'm just going with So this line. is your hub mount, okay? The, the hub here is mounted to a piece that then... Let me move this out of the way. I'm going to take a look too since you got it out that, here. This is where your axle is. Obviously, you can't see it in this particular pick, but what this does is it actually increases that, makes it taller. Therefore, the wheel is sitting higher, okay, and gives you more drop. Our next pick... Oh, no, we don't want to do that. Put the porn away. Okay, this is how it comes. Once you get it, he's got these tabs where it's cut here like this. They're not cut all the way through. You need to bend it over, okay? This gives you more of the same shape. This gives you support, okay? Because when you weld it, you're going to weld it here and across here, which gives you the this, this stiffness that you need to be more like the factory. You said bend it over. I said bend it over. <laughs> Sorry. Carry on. Just okay, it. here's your axle. Okay. That's a good pitch. This is the new hub mount. Obviously, on the other side, it's completely gone. These are your old hub mounts. This is a lot beefier than what you, and I'll show you in the next pick. This is where it's kind of tacked in. With this, this was a bad spot. This actually is not a good picture because you see my spacing here? This ain't good. We want that all the way out. So actually, I think I posted this picture and I think Randode said, hey, you got to redo that and move it all the way out. But you can see what we're doing, okay? We pulled the whole axle out to do this and then we're going to weld this in. The main problem that I had, and I will bring this up, is when you're doing this, you have to find a way to get it square. The problem is that this axle is coming out at an angle like this. How are you going to get it square when the axle itself is coming out it's really hard i don't know <laughs> rando may know i wonder if there's a way you can make like figure out a way to mark mark something or put up a template of where it's supposed to be from the factory and then you cut out what you need leave something there as a reference to Put what, it back and then weld it and then you check it for level. What I would do it and then if you're going to do it. this to get it square is what you need to do is you need to run a straight edge across the axle. Okay, you then need to run a 90 degree T or like a I don't like know like a T square or something T square. Well, you know you can get yeah, your like welder bracket, square put another piece on it. That's how you can get your square. Run another That's piece. The best up. thing I could think of. I think of it now. I've never done it, but we're, I'm going to. So this, this is... picture really isn't much other than showing the fact that <clears throat> I cleaned it all up uh, after I cut the old one off. Um, you can see here, this is the cup that I was talking about in the last segment that your bag can rub up against, okay? Yeah, that's no good. Don't let your bags rub. Okay, these are the old hub mounts. And you can see it was welded here and here, okay? And that's why the ones Randode have are bent like that. Gives it the same shape or you know beefiness as this one does. I'm gonna tell you another thing if you look at this now. See the spacer here? You do not have that with the Randodes. So when you bolt your hub up to this, and I had a problem with it, and this is all depend on your wheels and your spacing on your wheels. Oh, does it change where you I was it? rubbing, so you have to have a little bit. Uh, I shimmed mm -hmm. it out, and I was fine, but it is something to think about. If you're going to do this, you may have to put a wheel spacer in or shim it out a little bit because your wheels may rub. I think I was rubbing a part the, of the uh, wheel. The inner. I was, that was the smaller wheels, obviously, but that's something for you to know. Yeah, I just realized I can look at it on the laptop. I don't have to look at the TV. Yeah. So... So here we go. Here it is again. We're bolted, or we got it on here. I hadn't even welded it yet, but this is to show you where it is. Again, we want this all the way over here. That's going to get you where the spacing that you want. Now, the problem is with this, and I'm going to tell you, the XBs, when you up, raise and lower your car, you're actually your wheelbase shrinks and gets bigger. Okay. So mm -hmm. when you lower the vehicle, you need it all the way out here to get it far because if you've got it in here a ways you're going right. to hit that wheel tub and you're not going to want that so you want it all the way out here to give you the maximum distance you can to the inner wheel tub yeah that's a good thing to bring up because i think like well i think everybody knows that when you it collapse when you when you drop it it rolls forward but that is good to know yeah and definitely and like i said that's why i posted rando and said nope move it out so i did 
Okay. Let me know. So here we go. We got both axes, both of them on. I had kind of tacked them in place to hold them. I took them to a buddy's house and then had them welded. I welded it with a 220 welder. It is 220 only. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you're going to take a 120 and. No. That shit yeah, that no. Rando's got, I don't know what the heck the thickness of that was, but it was stout. My 110. It's heavy duty. <laughs> didn't like it. So you're definitely going to hit that with a, a 220. Okay. This is not an easy job. You guys that want the JDM axles, this is the same damn thing. Yeah. That's better. It costs a hell of a lot less than a JDM axle. It's a little easier to get. It's stronger and cheaper than just the shipping alone. Right. So keep so, that in mind too. So there you go. I don't remember what the price was on these, but hit up Rando if you're looking for it. This will help you get low. Then once you've done this, you got, remember, you cannot run the Sienna shocks. You have to go back to your factory shocks. Then the other thing that you do after this is you've got to raise the wheel well because this, when you do this, depending on your wheel, if you're running, I, I'm going to say if you're running the 15s, you're not doing this. If you're going to run 16s, 17s, 18s, you're going to be doing this, okay? And if you're doing that, you're going to, um, I totally lost my train of thought now. <laughs> but uh, basically, you're not going to be doing this with tiny little wheels. No, no you're going to want, to want to do this with a bigger wheel so you can get, get that clearance. Anyway, I think that's it for all this. That'll get you your lower on the back on that. And again, like I said, you've got your hub things here. Um, I don't, I don't know of anybody that has raised and lowered this to make the vehicle lower. You could do that by changing where the the spring mounts. I think you can, but I don't know. Is that worth guinea pigging on mine, or do I just raise the hubs on mine? What do you think? I'll tell you this: it's a hell of a lot easier to take the upper cup out than it is to fuck with the lower. That I can agree with for sure. And I'm going to tell you right now: you can lay hard hard on the back without doing that you know i was past side skirt when i did that now let's go into the other thing i read and re reiterate one thing that i had mentioned before uh we were talking about okay um to get your side skirt on the ground past the side skirt the next thing it does lay is your rail you're not laying the fucking rail on the ground if you have the side skirt no way. Fact. Fact. Undisputable. Uh, you can argue it Fact. all day long. All you got to do is go out and take a fucking picture, okay? I've gotten into arguments about this, so I'm a little steamed about it sometimes, and I'm sorry for the use of the F word. But you cannot fucking lay the goddamn rail on the ground without with a side skirt. Thank you. Period. Don't anyway, enough. next topic, anyway. we were getting into raising some towers. Where's you want to bring up how you top the rear, or are you going to get to that? Yeah, hold on. I can't find the mouse. It's right there. Just you, look at the... You know what? Because I'm looking at the wrong You're one. looking at the wrong... <laughs> Two... All right, guys. We're not going to talk about the strut just yet. I found this, which is another piece of the back that we'll get into. This right here is your upper spring mount, okay? This is where... Your spring actually mounts. There's a nub on there. This has got a little bit of a cup to it, but this is it, okay? And this is where your spring will mount. Now, what I did was, let me grab the right one. I'm going to go here. I took that whole thing out, okay? Now we're down to just the rail, so we don't have any of that there. Let me flip through a couple of these pictures here. Okay, this is the cup I made. This is actually made from buying a kit from Suicide Doors. Um, it's basically their, their cup mount. You can get it for anything. And basically it comes with a tube, which is your, your surround. It also comes with the, the mount or the plate that bolts to it, okay? And you buy those, you put it together and make what you want. What I did was this. I cut this spot out. This then allows the whole thing to mount past. So that the bottom of your, or your upper bag mount sits about where that plate was that we took out. <clears throat> Here's another shot of it. You can kind of see. Don't, <laughs> don't look at that freaking ratty ass fucking um, air thing I had on there at the time. Yeah, I was just about to ask about that, but like, it's all right. So there you can kind of see 
how it goes in. And that's going to be a lot lower than your factory sitting on your factory plate because that is actually right about, it's maybe a little tad bit lower. I think that was still sitting in there. I don't think I had it quite bolted in yet. But the frame or the bag will sit basically on your rail there. And that'll give you a little more drop. Now, that's a little different than the Randodes. Um, like I said, this is a kit that I did. I can make these if need be. I don't know if many people are going to go that route. Most people will probably want to do the Randodes, which you can do and get his are basically bolt in. You don't have to even take the cup out. No, his are very easy install. Like if you're worried about installing bags for the first time, his are pretty, you know, this, no this cutting, there's no welding. It goes right in. This is getting into the little things. When this you're, is, this when you're is trying, advanced. when this you're is, trying to lay out, you're getting to what's the next thing I can do. This is the next thing you do. So there's that. Who let me, is bugging me. Let me get the next thing here. Let me get the right mouse. All right, guys, now we're going to talk about strut towers. Pretty simple. Um, basically, it is where the top of the strut mounts, okay? And at the factory, it's at one height. And if you want to go lower, you raise them up. Nice thing about the XB is you got all kinds of room under that hood. If you're, working on, a, if you're working on a 350Z, this is going to be a lot harder. But anyway, um, in this picture, you can see I raised this thing basically three inches. That's to compensate for my body drop. The different thing about body drops on a unibody is is that you can do it two different ways okay and and i'll go into a unibody drop basically what that is is i've cut the whole floor out of the car and raised that up three inches okay i sectioned it into my rail which means i didn't change where the engine part sits i just raised the floor up sectioned my rail and brought it up so it's a little bit higher okay welded it back together then to compensate for the front I had to do the strut tower up here. I had already done the strut tower once. I think I raised it like an inch and a half and redid it. Um, but mm -hmm. this one, I totally went a little bit further when I did it um, and did it another inch and a half. So it was a total of three. But I raised that up. Now, what I did was, you know, obviously this looks kind of funky here. You've got two different sheets of metal. This is our factory piece. I just took that, welded in the next section of it, and then I went back and I plated over the top of it and welded it in so it was double thick. I didn't have any problems with it, didn't pop one weld on it. But that then takes my, my tower higher and allows that wheel to come up in. Obviously there's other things involved. I think I had to go in and where the, the inner fender is on the front where the fuse panel is. I had to push that in because of my spacing on my wheels. And I think I did a little bit on the back of the wheel well as well to do mm -hmm. it, to get it to tub in. So there's a little bit more work involved in that. We're getting into the high advanced, you know, end of this where- This isn't kids play here. This is this where is... you're wanting to lay that shit out. We're... This is where you're like learning how to weld and really like- I know in Randos, actually, it's in the picture back here. He did that to do his, to get his skirt uh, skirts on the ground when he initially did his. His setup was really trick. If you haven't seen it, I think if you go to his uh, website, or not website, his uh, Facebook page, he's got pictures of it. Um, but, um, you know, you're raising the tower there. That's another way. And like I said, this is way higher end, advanced end. But this is where you're going to get the rail on the ground or... You know, I think, I think when I did the inch and a half, I could have easily put the rail on the ground. Um, but I think I went past that. So there's other things that are involved too as you're getting into this. When we're doing this, you've also got to look at some other clearance issues. And people have asked me that before. What do you do? You know, how do you know what you're going to hit? You don't know. Okay. I, I would work on the car. I'd get under there and look, okay, what's next? Well, I got to figure out the axle clearance because, and you can do this on when you're doing, if you're running 15 inch wheels, you can actually lay the freaking axles on the pinch in the, in the rail in the front. So you might have to go do that. <clears throat> I know there was another time there was somebody else that was like talking about um, the power steering issue. Yes. And um, somebody said something that we were arguing about something. I don't remember what it was. There was a lot of arguing going on. Um, Anyway, I think it was Scott Fate back in the day. 
he was talking about okay. something. I said, first off, this guy, guy, the guy he was talking to, Scott was talking to, didn't know what he's talking about. I said, you know what? Oh, he was talking about, <clears throat> excuse me. He was talking about pulling your uh, sway bars out. You don't need yeah, to take, I already put that to the test. You don't need to take the sway bars out until you're way far into getting a hammer. Okay? Yes. Um, I'm not. Okay. On Dodes, we unhooked the sway bar links on a second gen. Made zero difference. None. Yeah. We measured Dude. it and everything. We tried it. So. You're not doing that until you're until getting you way hammered. Until you start cutting, you, I don't think the sway bar is a factor. No. Unless you've got some goofball setup. Like, I know if you have a Hodgkins, like Bob had that problem. He took. His out. Hotchkiss. The Hotchkiss, yeah. So. Thank you. One of the first things you're going to have to look at is if you're running a smaller wheel and another thing that you need to look. And you can do this just depending on it, but I'll, I'll leave this out there for all of you guys to watch, okay? You can actually air it out and lay that freaking axle on the power steering belt, okay? Watch it. I did it on uh, Ross's. I think it was on... 15 inch wheels uh, that were stretched tires and it was hitting the wheel well, but I actually went through power steering brake. I was driving it daily. I actually was driving it to my daughter's and I'm school and I'm driving away going, Oh, that looks like a power steering belt for an XB laying there. And I noticed like the next day, you know, the day before it was kind of, kind of harder to turn. And I was like, I get out at work and look, yeah, it's gone. That's funny because a thought, lot of cars, once you once you lose that power steering, you know it immediately. <laughs> well, with the XBs, you really don't notice it unless you're sitting still. Really? Yeah. Okay. And that's that's one of the guys. I've these guys are. Oh, I gotta have since. my power steering, dude. How many times do you turn your wheel sitting still? If you're driving, if you parallel, it's fine. if you parallel, but I drove Toyota trucks before this, so I didn't have power steering. Yeah. I but did. you know, if you need it, that's fine. Um, but keep in mind, watch for that because it's one of the first clearance issues you're going to have and you won't know it. And then you're going to be like, you'll pop a belt and you're like, Oh, what the hell? So watch for that. And you can look for it. Just go out and look, climb under the car, take a look up at when it's aired down and look up in there and see if the axle is even close to that power steering belt. And you can, I, there's ways of adjusting it. I don't know what all it was because I didn't get into all that. I know there's I was people gonna say that, for our viewers, what's the solution to that problem? I don't know. There are people that have ways of doing Somebody it. Somebody made a pulley kit at one point. It bolts in somewhere and it takes the belt up over onto like an idler pulley, but and then they, and then you get a different belt and they give you the part number for the belt. Yeah. I but, deleted it. Or you can do what he did and just take it out. Which you can take it out completely. One it, less thing on the motor. Is it? Yeah, it's That's less drive on the motor, it. which doesn't really matter. But um, I actually take took the whole thing out because I was actually. And then it. you and then you hook the two sides together and put fluid in it, right? So it still articulates yeah. and whatever. And I, and what I did was I took the whole pump out because I was actually hitting the pump at one point with the axle. No. Oh. But then yes, I took <laughs> I took the the two lines and hooked them together. And now it's basically a manual rack and I filled them all up and then put them together and haven't had a problem since. I don't have power steering, but I don't really need it. But the nice part is you can turn when the car's off. But you're also, once you pass that, you're then going to have to look at your pinch welds on, I think it's the, the same side, the passenger side, because that axle is longer. You're going to might have to notch the pinch for the axle to come up in there a little bit. And, uh, you should be good for that. And then you don't have to actually notch into the frame until you're getting to, you know, like this where you're, you're raising towers and whatnot. But that's that. Um, that's another section of it, um, the towers. Now we'll get into the full-on body drop. Okay, guys, we finally figured out how we're going to talk about the body drop. Oh, that arm's off frame. Okay, sorry. He, he was slowly... Shrinking out. I'm just shrinking out like this. Andy, I'm on I'm on hydros now. And he's turning into the Unabomber. <laughs> Unabomber. Do people still talk about that? I don't know oh, God. Unabomber. I don't know. That was a long time ago. Anyway. All right, guys. So we're going to go a little outside of the XB thing to, to explain this. But uh, I figure this is going to be the best way to do it. All right. If you look at a truck, okay, pickup truck of any kind, and you look at it you can see we've got the frame here that is protruding down so if we put this thing on air ride 
and we lay this thing down on the ground, we're still going to have this sticking down, okay? And that's the same what happens with the XB. Once we take that side skirt off and we're able to lay that rail flat on the ground, you're still going to look at the car and it's going to look like it's about three inches off the ground. And so what you have to do to do that is what they do with this truck. You then come back, you cut the whole floor out all the way around, firewall, back of the cab, everything, and you bring that down to cover that gap, okay? So now at that point, your lowest point is either going to be your pinch weld, which is the little weld piece. You'll see it's a flat strip of metal at the bottom. Or you can cut that off. You weld that flat, and then you lay it completely flat and lay rocker on the ground. Then if you really want to get extreme in mini truck world, you go door, and you take out, if there's a piece back here, usually you've got a spot underneath the door sill, and you can cut that off, and you can lay that on the ground. I don't know if anybody does that. I don't anymore. think anybody does that anymore. And Pee Wee, you are completely off. Frame. I know. I think I, I think I'm pushed out, and you're like too far over. There. Like, see now, it? you got to be able to see with Pee Wee, right? Well, I don't. I don't really have much to say. This is this is all you. You're you're just here to be. Uh, yes. Pee Wee. Yeah. So where did I leave off? Okay. So the same with the XBs. We take that side skirt off, and you've got three inches off the ground. Okay. And you can see that in the car. You know, you spent all that time. I got it done. And I went, fuck, I still look like I'm three inches off the ground. I don't like it. So we go with a little bit further. I cut the whole floor out. I cut across the front. I didn't cut the firewall because it was a little harder because of the unibody with the rail. I cut it across before that section of my rail and brought that up. And what I say by sectioning the rail is, okay, the rail that runs down the back, the whole car comes up and goes into the engine compartment. You can see that. That's the rails that are on each side of the the motor when you look inside, okay? That's your rail. I took, took three inches out of it, raised it up, and attached that floor to that, okay? So then that whole floor, all that was all done. I didn't have to affect any of the engine under the hood. Whereas if you're doing a regular body drop, a lot of times the motor will rise up and whatnot and it has problems some cars with, uh, or trucks with, right. with that. So I didn't have to deal with that. I raised the towers up and that took care of that problem, but the rest of it is all the same. So now <clears throat> when you look under mine, you will actually see everything flat underneath. You don't see the rail because it's pushed up so that when I lay down, I can actually lay everything completely flat on the ground lay the pinch welds on the ground, which another thing I found out is, and I'll, I'll, I'll make this public knowledge now, you cannot cut off all of the pinch on a first gen XP because part of that is the rail. And I was like all ready to cut it off and I found it out when I was going and redoing the tube frame up front that oh, part you? of the tube hangs down and it is part of that. So right now, Mine has no pinch weld on it on one side or on the front because it's pretty much ground off completely. <clears throat> so right. that takes care of that. But now it's completely flat on the ground. And that's what a body drop is or in this particular instance, a unibody drop. And yes, it is a lot of work. You have, to, like I said, cut the entire floor out. If you go on to my build page, if you really want to see pictures of it and what's gone, it'll be a little easier to see any of these pictures that I've showed you. You go on to my build page for Project Rail and Box, and it will have all this stuff in there, and you can see pretty much everything. Um, you know, but uh, it's it's really a trip because I think there's one of my favorite pictures of doing the whole body drop was if you guys have ever had the carpet out of your your XB, you'll see that there's these little drain hole plugs in the bottom, and if you take those out, and I, my truck is laid on the ground, you can stick your finger through it, and feel the ground. So when you're <laughs> when your your feet are in the car, you are about this far off. When you of the when you ride it, it's pretty wild because like when he puts it down, you feel it in your feet and in your butt, and you know, it's like even when you get in it, you have to like drop down so far just to get it. Now he had he had bucket seats before, which sat lower too, which but it really feels like you're on the ground. Yeah, you're definitely on the ground with it, and it feels weird. But I I love it. 
I know Alan Singer, he about jumped out of his skin the first time I was driving it and I, I drug it with him because it's all, you know, think about it. When you guys, you see these guys dragging these things and they've got their, their drag blocks on, it's cool because you've got a few contact points. Maybe it's all the way in the back because like on mine, I, I had hooked them up to the uh, tow hook bars that are right. tow hooks in the back. I, I cut those off and welded it to it. And it works great because I can take them off, adjust it and whatnot. But if you do that, that points all the way in the back. You know, you'll hear it. You feel it a little bit. But when you're dragging body. When you put the whole body on the ground, you feel like, it's yeah. It's you know, the whole thing. And it scares the shit out of people. I love doing it. But that explains that. Um, unfortunately, like I said, I don't have the pictures of it. If you do want to see it, check out my Project Rayland Box page on Facebook. Look it up. I've got everything in there. You can go into libraries, and I've got it all broken down. You can find them, and that'll show you in depth what I did. Uh, I think there's pictures in there that I would have to, you know, look for years to find. But that's pretty much it. Okay. I know some of the stuff I was going to get into some other stuff too because I'm toying with the idea of expanding on this. Unfortunately, with a lot of it, we're not getting a lot of view views that we're looking for. And I'm thinking we may have to expand this to go into other aspects of cars, you know. Yeah. I, I love the XB world and all, but, you know, if we're going to. It's, it's, it's like a narrow market to begin with, and we're finding out just how narrow it is. And, and you know, when we, went, we watched it go downhill. I think the first episode we had was 300 views, and now we're down to 100 on episode five. So, you know, I don't know if that's because our content sucks or what, but we'll see. But, you know, we're going to toy with some other stuff. So hopefully I, I don't want to have to go into other stuff, but um, you never know. So we, we got to see what we can do. And I've got people from work that are actually, I, I had a kid at work who's into Hondas and he's like, dude, do some Honda shit. And no. I'm like, I'm like uh, I, I would stop doing this before <laughs> I start doing Honda coverage. But. There's a lot to talk about. Hondas are on the bottom of that list. So Sorry, uh, what but. we will ask of you guys, I know right now we're still new. But if you could guys give us a freaking uh, shout out by a uh, like, a share, a share, get us out it. there. Yeah. And, and one of the things I had done and I didn't push it too hard was the fact that um, if you guys share, I'll pick the guy who's, you know, if you really put some effort into it and do some shares for us and that, we're going to put your picture in our thing where it says, you know, outside the box and we always have an XB, your XB can be there. And that's one of the things that we're, we've done and we want to do in the future. Maybe but. we could do like giveaways if you like link it to enough people or something. We're going to have something to give something away, like Pee-wee. I can figure something out. Okay. We've got XB paraphernalia. But yeah, thanks a lot, guys. You know, we, we do get a lot. We do get some support. And I'm not saying it's not appreciated. But, you know, we, we do. We need just a little more support. If you guys could help us out a little bit, push the love a little bit, you know. Uh, help us out. We're trying to do something here and, uh, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy it. You know, get down below. I'm doing this and the, the camera's way too high. It's, but, yeah. but um, you know, you guys, sh um, send us some comments. Let us know you're out there. It gives us a little more in input or effort. It gives us an effort to go push out in there and make some more. Um, that, not to say that we don't, but, you know, we're, we're just trying this shit out. So hopefully it works out. Um, you got anything else you want to say, Pee Wee? Like, share, subscribe. Yeah, I am liking it. We did get quite a few subscribers. I think we're up to 150 subscribers. Yeah, I mean, we just like with like more support. We we could probably do better sharing it. I think a lot of people know about what we're doing. We like. I think on the next episode, I think we could maybe try and get a guest. Well, because it seems like those go over well. Uh, that's and that's we'll leave that up to you guys. What do you want to see? Do you want to see guests? Do you want to hear people talk? Do you want to hear us do more tech? What do you want? You know, let us know because just general conversation about whatever we don't get. You know, we get input. Okay, guys, it's a great show. They're getting better, and I appreciate that. But if you guys give us a little more and say, hey, you know, can you do a thing on bags? Can you, you do that fucking video that you promised us on freaking uh, measuring backspacing or? or whatever, you know, let us know. We really want to know what's, what you guys are thinking. Um, and like I said, that helps keep us motivated and out here. So, and, and maybe, maybe, maybe just maybe we can get Pee Wee to take off the sunglasses. Yeah. If we hit like, 
I'll tell you what, if we hit a thousand subscribers, I'll take the sunglasses off. A thousand? Come on, dude. Are we at a thousand now? No, we're at 150. Well, I'll get to a let's, thousand. Let's make it a get realistic a thing here. Thousand's <clears throat> reasonable. At it, least it, I didn't go ten thousand. Well, a thousand, you ought to be naked, goddammit. I don't think anybody wants you, you. You tell people that we're gonna get nowhere. <laughs> Please, we're gonna lose subscribers if I get naked. <laughs> Come on now. So anyway, guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, sorry it took us so long to do this one. We're trying to get some shit together and do what we but, had stuff uh, going on. You know, it's, you know, but we're we're hopefully we're back on schedule. So we're throwing this up. And maybe and we'll then, get it so that we're looking at the camera again. We got a little better. We, but. Yeah, well, the first half was okay, but after we went to halftime here, we like... Well, the problem is, is that camera. we can't put anything on the freaking truck anymore because it's yeah. painted. <laughs> yeah, well, now it's all painted and nice. We can't... So we do haven't it. shown anybody that yet, have you? No, I haven't. Maybe we'll put it back together and then do that. Well, yeah. But you guys also, the normal stuff, um, you got our, our Instagram tags and all that shit on the, in the Oscar outro. Oscar Badger and Sir Lord Oz. Look us up. We'll put pictures up there. You'll see what's going on. I am getting fucking close to a thousand people. On Facebook? On, on Instagram. On Instagram? I don't I, even know where I'm at. I'm at a, almost a thousand. I think I'm uh, 936 and I have not. Oh, you're like right there. I have not had to show my boobs yet. It's harder than uh, fuck to get a thousand people yeah, you without have showing to your have tits. boobs to get over a thousand. So or you have to be like posting every ten minutes, and I just don't. So okay. guys, go on there, help give me some more likes or front, you know, shoot me on there. It'd be cool. I want trying to get to a thousand, and yeah, it seems kind of sad, but it's it's a, a personal goal. But anyway, thanks a lot, guys. We like the attention. We're gonna stop rambling. We're gonna let you go. We have a, we have to swap a wheel bearing now. We're, yeah, it's it's fucking. We already did tacos. It's we now, did tacos and WalMarts. We got that out of the way. So now it's time to get to work. And to do that, we gotta tear all this shit down, and and we'll stop. We rambling. gotta tear down the studio. Yeah. Well, all right. All right, guys. Later, dude.